My name is Anne Fitt Johal. I'm 22 years old. I'm at the University of Birmingham studying geography with urban and regional planning. Well, Anne Manprit is one of our star students. She came to us uh, three years ago as uh, on the geography planning joint honours programme. Um, and from day one, she has proved to be an excellent student, a complete joy to teach. She seems to have dealt with the challenge of her deafness extremely well. I've been profoundly deaf since birth. My parents found out when I was 18 months old and then I started wearing hearing aids. At the age of four, I went to a mainstream school with a deaf unit and about two years later, I was transferred to a mainstream school without a deaf unit. I found that very hard because I had to rely on my radio aid, teaching assistant, which is why I decided to go to Mary Hare at the age of 11. Mary Hare School uh, caters for severe and profoundly deaf children. Armin was one of that you know, category. They provided very good deaf education, but I realised that it's not the real world. My deafness didn't stop me from doing things. As after I left school, I took a gap year and travelled around the world. So I went with two other friends and started from South America, New Zealand, Fiji, Australia and the Far East. I did all sorts of things from sky diving, bungee jumping, black water acting, fleet parties, skiing, uh, snorkeling, and a teaching placement in Borneo for six months. I had a great time, probably the best time in my life. When I had my hearing aid at university, I had to sit at the front and be able to make sure that the electric face was facing me. So I would wander up and down the channel, but I had to sort of change my sort of uh, uh, behaviour because Anne Amprit would look at me and say, no further, because she always wanted me to stand in front of her so that she could lip read. I found out about the implant through a friend because she decided to have an implant at the age of 18. Um, a cochlear implant is an implantable device that gives a perception of hearing to severe to profoundly deaf people um, who get very limited benefit from conventional hearing aids. My parents weren't sure about me having an implant because I was doing fine in life. And I think the idea of having surgery near your brain is quite scary. I mean, it was big surgery, big kind of invasive surgery and obviously the anxieties around the anaesthetic and how it would go and whether it would work. We know that communication is made up of um, the sounds that people can hear through their hearing aids, um, the lip reading cues that they get from watching somebody's face and those two aspects working together and part of the assessment is we tease out those different elements and so some of the tests that Alan Pritt will have done is some tests of lip reading on its own we're just watching a man sure saying some sentences without with any sound on at all. And then we tested each ear individually, um, where we add the sound back in, so she can hear the person's Finish voice and see what they're saying. And we test each ear separately, which helps us to decide which ear is the most optimum side for a cochlear implant. Some people might think it's a late age to have a cochlear, uh, but um, she decided to go for it. And it's very difficult for us as implant professionals to really explain what it's like to hear through a cochlear implant. We still remember the day that it was switched on because it was incredibly emotional. And I actually cried on the day and I couldn't stop crying because it just sang so different. It was just like ten times much more powerful than the hearing aid and my body wasn't used to it. It was quite a daunting experience at first because it's not what you expected and not in a bad way but you didn't expect it to be so much hard work, quite frustrating okay. and other people had to be quite patient with you. Time. So as I went back to the implant centre I kept talking about the sound I heard and Louis told me yes that is normal, that kind of gave me, that made me feel a bit more comfortable with the implant. Even when it came to the tuning system, I told them to go a bit higher to make sure that I got used to it quicker. I wear an implant on my left thigh and a hearing aid on the right thigh. The implant picks the high frequencies, whereas the hearing aid picks the low frequencies. And I'm comfortable with that because the hearing aid fills in the gaps that the cochlear implant doesn't provide. 
Think of how the implant I'm able to understand the lecturer without having to look at his face all the time. There has been a noticeable change. It's certainly given me my freedom back in terms of wandering. So I'm able to look down in my lecture and take note what he's saying because I understand the context of what he's talking about. So I think you know it has made a really big difference in terms of her ability to sort of participate in lectures and to uh, to act as a, as, a, as a hearing student would. When you're listening to an iPod, it's the same as any other person. There's like a wire that connects you with the implant and to your iPod, so it's not like, it's not really obvious that you're a guest. Since I've had the implant, I've been able to understand hearing people better and follow a conversation in small groups. It sharpened my hearing and I do feel the implant is like 10 times better than the hearing aid. With the implant, I find myself more relaxed. I don't have to concentrate so much and I'm not so tired at the end of the day. And you see that in her face, she doesn't look so exhausted, you know, when she's had a hard day. And that's lovely to see that she's not having to concentrate as much. She gets involved in conversations a lot more and she finds it easier to follow people as well. Which direction is it in? Um, where are we going? Right one. That way? Yeah, okay then. Yeah, I mean, Amber's always been a confident girl, to be honest, but I think definitely since she's had the implant, it just helps her pick up on like, some little things that she probably hasn't been able to pick up on before. And also, I think when we go out for a drink or something, um, she can probably pick up quite a little bit better, a little bit more what I'm saying, or especially if we're in an environment where there's lots of other sounds around. She copes really, really well. I mean, um, certainly she's more organised than most, most hearing people I know. In the pub environment, she would have struggled with hearing aids. But now the implant's a lot better and she can be more interactive with everyone. <laughs> Definitely from what she said, you know, she finds it a lot easier. For those who are considering an implant, I would say go for it. From my experience, it's benefited me a lot. The Brain Flat Scholarship will enable me to carry on my education both in London and if it goes well, America. Although I've only had the implant for 12 months, it has helped me to enhance my hearing to such a great extent that I feel so much more confident both with my friends and at work.